My name is Holly Mobley, I am a Poetry Society Young Critic, and today I'm reviewing Denise Soule's The Room Between Us, which was shortlisted for this year's T.S. Eliot Prize. Like Gucci reading glasses for your public crying, Denise Soule's The Room Between Us reframes grief, pulling into focus the stark nuance of loss. Through prose poetry and anti-eulogy, Soule deconstructs the aesthetics of femme grief while remembering her mother in the last moments of life. There's a scene in the British tragicomedy series Fleabag, where Phoebe Waller-Bridge preps for her on-screen mother's funeral. She looks too nice to be in mourning. Her skin is glowing, her eyes are bright, and her hair won't stop falling in this really chic way. What Phoebe's writing explores so deftly is the aesthetic of grief, the gendering of grief, the expectation of how nice women do their grieving. Out of eyesight, negotiating their sadness in the modest corners of the room. Denise Sol explores this idea in her collection The Room Between Us. But who is this curated sad woman anyway? And what are the ramifications of her existence? This ideal woman of grief in Western society is an aesthetic. We picture her in all black. We picture her silent. We picture her tears, but we never picture her moving. A soul writes of her mother in poem The White Room. I look at the hand that does not move on the cushion and I call it Paula. Here, Saul's mother is immobile, her hand remaining still. Saul gives a separate name to this part of her mother's body, transforming the submissive hand into a mouthpiece for a post-stroke mother who is now struggling to speak. Outside of the collection's reality, we are quick to give objects feminine names. Cars are called Bessie, bikes are named Christine. In Saul's poem one, she watches builders close by as they drink a bottle of Shiraz. They christen her Lucy. Again, there's a sense of objectification. The bottle of wine is in one way gendered, is given identity, looks consumable, is the giver to men and therefore made a woman. These renowned objects become metaphors for the ideal woman of grief, silent, empathetic, to be pitied and drunk from. Saul's preoccupation with nouns leaks into every room of the collection, her grief evasive, her grief like bathwater overflowing from a flat above, what I found most moving in this collection are the words the poet chooses to omit. In first conversation, Zori plays a chat she had with her mother saying, what you leave out is everything. This happened and this happened and then this. In the absence of specificity is confusion and fear. The reader are with Sol's mother, unable to name and place the room they are in. What would usually be a poem's anchor, these nouns, liquefy, leaving the reader adrift in a post-stroke landscape even the poems themselves begin forgetting words, their geography changing like the mother, who was only able to place an object by its claustrophobic absence in the room. Take this quote from Bride Stripped Bear. Gossamer stretches, drawn not from them, but from their not them. Here Saul begins to adopt her mother's voice, her aphasia, leaving out words and actively resisting the fetishization of grief. This absence also protects the reader. By keeping them remote at times, Denise lays claim to her grief refuses to negotiate, gives herself privacy saying, this grief is mine, I can do what I want with it. My grief is not an accessory, my grief is not something you can put on. This resistance to gendered grief makes Soul's poems anti-eulogies, if a eulogy is a praising speech to remember. These poems critique, examine, hold some things they would like to forget, are structured like newspaper eulogies, written in prose poetry or styled as diary entries. In a collection where grief takes the form of borrowed objects, Gucci reading glasses, a book of prayers and a Guyanese gold bracelet, Denise rewrites the narrative for women in mourning. She asks, is my grief romantic to you? Presenting a world marked by the furniture of her everyday life, these objects being her most powerful symbols of grief. In No Word for Blue, Saul writes, my mother's ring has no beginning and no end. I donated it to a charity shop. If this grief feels inappropriate, insensitive, sometimes bored and so honest that it risks being seen as unattractive, then that feels like the point. It's this complexity and Sol's expression of I am this but I'm also that, which in turn makes her grief harder to force into a measure of her femininity, her essential goodness as a woman. Some poems in the room between us don't mention the death of Sol's mother or her illness at all. There is no official leaving poem or satisfying end to her mother's parting. What feels so inappropriate about this grief is that sometimes it leaves relents, allows us moments to forget. In the room between us, a woman grieving is no longer someone to be looked at and pitied. She is a complex individual with a whole new language for grief. Ultimately, Sol's collection is a reclamation that makes time for mundanity and complexity. 
asking us to respect the way women in grief occupy a space, yet encouraging us to do the same, to act as soul rights in the poem Golden Grove, to salt the air, trouble the light. <laughs>